What up, fam? We're sticking with fam so far. I hope you're having a wonderful day, wherever you are. Actually, you know what? Let us know where you are. Write in the comments right now where you're watching this from, because we're quite curious where we're building this audience from. So hello to all of you. Anastasia, Martin, who else want to shout out to? Tice, there's a few amazing comments we've had lately. Uh, we love you for it. Thank you. Keep keep commenting. Andrew as well. Remember another, another, another comment. Um, so today we're going to talk about what, Rufus? What are we chatting about? We're talking about delivery drones. Delivery drones, yeah. finally they're here. <laughs> How long have we been waiting for delivery uh, Amazon drone services? I remember it was like maybe 2016 or 17. Yeah. Uh, April Fool's joke was the Amazon drone dropping off something and the dog fighting it or something. Finally, is it here or when is it uh, here? It's not here yet. Okay. Um, um, a team called Mana raised $25 million for release of the drones in 2023. Release the drones. Release yeah. the drones! <laughs> yeah, it's a horror movie. Yeah. It's actually, it was like, yeah, release yeah. the dogs. Yeah. Uh, because of the regulation in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but what I want to talk about, it's epic that they're doing it. Yeah, finally. Yeah. But one angle I want to take on this is drones has been news for a long time now, many years. Yeah, that's true. Good and bad. Remember, remember yeah. the times there was like people flying drones around airports. Remember, like Gatwick closed twice, like a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, someone, someone were like, "There's a drone in the air," and then they found that it was like a bird or you know something. What I want to ask you about, I, the drones has not been scalable yet, and probably because of regulation. But in US, is not that much of regulation of it, and with the electric car as well, it, it didn't scale up before like Tesla come and planted the flag there. So how do investors and uh, VCs like catch the trends? Like, okay, now we're ready to invest and go all in on this project. Mm. How do you, do you see that and where is the right time to do that actually? Great question. I can give you two former examples actually. So uh, I think it was in 2016, GDPR was introduced, yeah. uh, the regulation of GDPR with banking. Uh, and then obviously the, um, P no, sorry, it's PSD2. Sorry, that was the financial regulation on PSD2 in 2016, I think it was. And then there was GDPR in 2018 or 19. Correct. Forgive me on the dates. But those were introduced then. Now, the interesting thing about when uh, regulation hits an industry, uh, a lot of companies are primed for that. Uh, a lot of startups are primed with services to help companies uh, adapt, right? So that a good example is with, with um, uh, PSD2 and what's the other one again? Uh, GDPR. Yeah, God, I'm trying to catch him out. Great job, well done. He's listening, he's listening, <laughs> and you too. Um, and, uh, you know, GDPR required a lot of companies um, to uh, wor work on their compliance and things like that. So there were a bunch of startups. I remember a bunch of startups that I met a couple years ago before this was meant to happen were primed and ready. You know, they'd mm. raised money on the expectation that, that, that an industry would be born based on regulation change. And okay. we see this time and time again, every couple of years, it doesn't happen all the time, but every couple of years, something major happens where an industry restructures, an industry uh, reorganizes itself, it standardizes itself, meaning that startups who foresee that, and actually, again, I'm gonna reiterate this point, um, some of the most successful people and startups are the ones that forecast what's gonna happen in the next five, 10, 15 years, you know? And, and I mean, Jeff Bezos is an example of that. He forecasts selling any, everything online, started Amazon in like 92 or, yeah. nine, I forget exactly when he started it. Uh, you know, and look at look where it is today, like 30 years later, right? You know, it is like, it owns everything. But a lot of people laughed at that guy back in the day. A lot of people didn't do payments online back in the day. So uh, actually, honestly, a lot of startups, um, who can predict what's going to happen with a, you know, obviously a degree of certainty, go and create products. Uh, a lot of people laugh at them and think they're fools. And then the regulation changes and they're like the frontier technologies they're the front runners. And so to answer your question, uh, how do VCs predict these or, or guess these things? I mean, VCs uh, are following trends as much as the startups. They are definitely, right. and a lot of VCs are thought leaders, like they're experts in specific industries, right? And the reason for that is that they can add value to the companies that they join as an expert, also with their network, as well as the capital. To be honest with you, like the, the least... Uh, the least valuable thing VCs, well, okay, not the least, but like one of the most, the least valuable things VCs offer is money, to be honest. They should be offering network uh, and expertise and skill sets and all this kind of stuff, right? Helping with hiring, et cetera. So to answer your question, um, VCs track trends as much as the startups do, and they're tracking which startups are in those trends. Your job as a VC is you're sort of like a, you know, you're, you're, you're out there analyzing industries, trends, companies following and tracking companies it's almost like the draft for the nba you're out there as like a scout this is a good example you're a scout looking at the basketball players and uh, you know the, the hockey players at when they're at university 
and you're like, you know, we, we foresee that this this team is going to need uh, this kind of player and you're out there picking the winners, right? And that's exactly what you're doing as a VC, following trends and identifying companies that are the best, that have the best likelihood of succeeding yeah. in that in that race. Okay, but uh, this drone company, sure. I, I feel it's pretty early stage since they're only raising $25 million. I be- Not early stage, but you know. Uh, I bet it's like gonna need a lot more money than that to like, gets the uh, Globo or uh, Uber Eats for drones. Sure, sure, yeah. What do you think it can involve into, like the drone delivery? Well, what market so do you think? I'll tell you something interesting. Take? I remember when, the, obviously, the, the dawn, the spawn, I'll call it the spawn, because it's kind of relevant, like spawning drones everywhere, yeah. right? When that kicked off with DJI, and it must have been like probably closing on a decade ago, I don't know, maybe uh, so many years. I'll tell you a fun fact. A friend of mine started a drone insurance company, which I was part of for a period of time, insuring hobbyist drones and things like that. He was, did, a, did a great job of it. It was called Icarus or something. Shout out to you, Chris. Love you, man. Um, now he's doing a great job in the UAE, actually. But anyway, he foresaw that this industry was going to take off, right? And he went to the insurance space of it. Now, um, drones uh, back then, right? I, I remember meeting companies that, firstly, the reason this compliance thing uh, and regulation around drones, when drones were created or born, spawn, and everyone was buying them as a hobbyist, a hobbyist being like Rufus or I buying a DJI Phantom 2 and flying it around the city, obviously that's so dangerous because firstly, the drones aren't insured and you're not insured. So what if you fly that drone into a building? Who's liable? Yeah. The, the insurance of the building, or if you hit a car, God forbid you hit a child, you know? I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. That's why drones are banned in cities. Because, you know, mm. for all you know, you'll fly it into other people and be an idiot with it. But also, because also you're not, like, you're a hobbyist, you're not a professional drone pilot. That's why you're only allowed to fly drones in cities if you get permission. And if you're a drone pilot, so you have to be, re- you know, kind of regulated okay. and stuff like that, right? That's why companies were created. Again, a side industry was created out of that. Because the regulation came in and the negative for drone users and then drone pilots became a thing. And drone, uh, you know, filming oh, yeah. for, for movies and stuff. Anyway... So cities ban the use of them also because drones, uh, you know, uh, around cities with helicopters and also around airports, you know, when you're landing and taking off, drones could be a massive problem. They could also be used for warfare. I mean, we've seen ter- like, uh, I think in the London when that um, Gatwick uh, disaster happened, I don't know, it was yeah. like three years ago or something when they closed Gatwick for two days because there was a drone sighting. The whole, and it was like in the, you know, the, in the area, area um, they thought it could be a terrorist attack because obviously a terrorist literally fly a drone up and it was a plane's landing. <laughs> Boom. Hit, the, yeah. hit one of the engines, you know, crashes. No bombs involved. Simplest, easiest way to create an attack. The same as like all these horrible things, right? So, so the government has to go immediately, let's regulate this straight away. And they didn't know what, how to regulate it, like sets and bars. So it's a flat out ban of all of this, right? And I remember back in the day then, there were a bunch of companies that went to like Africa and other nations. And it's easier in like a nation like um, like like America, where it's like, you know, in areas as big flat open lands, yeah. uninhabited. Europe's quite dense, I think, population I wise, um, obviously not everywhere, but it's also hilly and mountainous. Drones could fly line of sight because they're how their frequencies work. So in Africa, for example, I saw a bunch of companies developing medical technology drones that would basically, like someone would have a heart attack. It's a first response drone. And basically a drone would take off with the defibrillator pack to the you know way faster because it flies this, the direct line yeah. of sight like as the crow flies right and it would do that get to the person uh, and then the defibrillator would be dropped and whoever's there gets like a manual how to like defibrillate and that could that could save heart attacks like my father who passed away do, doing that could have could have survived maybe he was actually funny enough in kenya so um uh, but uh, i'm sure they didn't have those then there but that's that's actually the first instance where you see dro- the use of drones proving civilian benefit in first responses with like strokes or with heart attacks and stuff like that, right? So I see that coming in. I, th- I can't remember your question. I've just been talking about drones and where I think <laughs> they're going because it's so exciting to see what drones will do. Um, and drone delivery, of course, is, is is cool because you can, from depots, you it's like less crowded. I mean, there's, there's an, oh, I'm getting excited. There's like, there's definitely an opportunity here because it's like less crowded streets um, because there's no less people on cycle, uh, bikes, less people on um, cars, scooters, delivering things. If these drones could deliver things, that'd be great. But I think definitely um, they need to regulate um, how the airways, they need to create like yeah. flight zones, like when airplanes take off, you know, the, the zones, uh, the flight paths are owned by the airlines. So some like British Airways owns the fastest flight path from New York to London because they've owned it for 50 years yeah. or something, right? And that is literally like, it's like a pocket of air that's like 500 by 500 by 500 by 500 feet. Uh, and that, that pocket, it's just like a, a pocket of air that goes like this. And they own that flight path. Um, yeah. to New York. And I think that's where companies will start to buy up flight path. Yeah. Um, so maybe these companies will start to do that and scale that up into cities. I know that wasn't your question. What was your question? <laughs> no, I, I will. You answered the question how the <coughs> industry will involve. 
Yeah. But I want to take it back a couple of steps. What you mentioned earlier that in 2016 and 2018, uh, people was like betting on the regulations to hit. Yeah, to change. And do you think this company has been doing that the same way? Because uh, what I'm trying to ask is, is it a big thing where companies like build up a certain amount of stage before they're like, okay, we're ready at this stage. If the uh, regulation hit in, we can like scale up. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, you're completely correct in that. That of course, because they've had this time frame, and I think in the article it said 2023, so in two yeah. years' time, right? So you know they've probably been building. You know, it raises 25 million maybe to to finish off the last final stage. But I think you've got to look at it in stages, right? So if if obviously they know that the regulation will change, um, eventually. And like anything, you know, uh, you're guessing on the government's ability to to move, and governments don't famously move quickly, um, but they do move eventually, right? So if you if you if you are making a long term bet, like for example, and this is what VCs bet in, like uh, bet on, if you were to say as a, to a VC, like we we are going to be the number one um, dis- distributed drone delivery service platform, whatever they're doing in Europe, uh, you know, that's what that's our long term vision. You don't really need to worry, and it's gonna it's gonna become regulation will allow us to do this. It might be in two years, it might be in five years, it probably won't be in ten years. It'll be under seven years. So we need twenty five million dollars right now to basically finish off everything, start working on contracts, and I bet you anything they've also done deals. So like they're not just these deals might not be monetized yet because they haven't been allowed to deliver these things, but yeah. ultimately they have been doing everything they can, and and that's what VCs are betting on because if the regulation changes. They have all the contracts. They have the distributed network of drone del- drone delivery services uh, in Europe. They can scale up quickly because they've got a working system and things like that. Um, obviously, they need to test it in a live environment. I'm sure they've done all manner of tests and, th- and things like that. So, um, so yeah, uh, of course, um, I think that's yeah. uh, that's being prepared yeah. for something that is inevitable. Is they the best already way. signed partnerships? There you go. Yeah, yeah. It just eat Samsung and Ben and Jerry's. So you wow. can sit on the beach and like, whoop. I'm curious, but I'm curious like what's the cost around drone delivery? And I mean, I'm quite curious yeah. like what's, I mean, cause obviously there are machines ultimately. So, you know, um, they can, they have a lifetime of running and, and um, you know, they're, they're, they have like, they did, they depreciate over time. But imagine if, you know, if you're dropping off ice cream, like how much does ice cream have to cost? Like for drone delivery, I, I'm curious to know how that stuff will all work. But maybe they're so quick that like they can, in five minutes, they can, if, you know, you're a kilometer away, they can go yeah. to you in two and a half minutes and back. And uh, they probably have a, a a radius or something. I don't know. Yeah, and a lot of it will be also digitized, so it's not human that's controlling it. Correct. They're just putting in their notes yeah. where you're going. Boom. Complete automation. Out. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm quite curious to see if you know. I'm sure there'll be like a drone a, jo- a drone crash and stuff like that, <laughs> and and how they're going to minimize the risk on humans sitting below, like watching things. Yeah. But um, yeah. That's pretty cool. Mm. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Did I, I feel like I just rambled on about drones. And I, like I love how excited you yeah, are I got about excited drones. About You're like a about, small kid. Yeah, I could talk about this topic uh, a while, actually. Yeah. So, Rufus, is how, how, hold on. How, how are you doing in your journey so far? The pre-minus one phase. Have you, did you sit down on Sunday? Uh, I didn't start on Sunday. When did we start? We started we, this week we already. We recorded uh, oh, yeah, on see, Tuesday. Trying to catch them out already. Have you been thinking? Yeah, I d- have that. And <laughs> I'm thinking like... Why don't I have like more problems so far? <laughs> and that's fine. Be, be, be casual with yourself. Yeah. But the point I wanted to make is that Rufus now, another example, could think about what he thinks regulation change will happen in the next three to five years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And actually think, or, or sorry, in the next like six to six to six to three years, six months to three years. And think maybe you could come up with something there too. Yeah, so that's absolutely. another one for you. Uh, let us know if you think there's some massive uh, opportunity coming. Write it in the comments. We'll tag it at the top there. Um, you could share it with someone. Maybe you're looking for a co-founder. Maybe you're looking to get some sparring if you think that there's something's going to change and, and we could give you some advice on that let us know thank you for watching this episode rufus what do we say to the wonderful people please subscribe please like and subscribe yes. please like this video it costs you nothing it really helps us youtube loves yeah, liked does. videos and uh you know what if you enjoyed this video there's lots more golden stuff like this so go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel as well yeah. thank you thank see you in the next episode Ciao. bye